If there were a big game animal that could be classified as free-spirited, it would have to be the caribou. Caribou are almost constantly on the move. Some caribou migrate more than 3,000 miles each year, more than any other land animal. They travel in herds every fall and spring from their wintering to their calving grounds and arrive just in time to think about heading back. Caribou inhabit the Arctic tundra, mountain tundra, and northern forests of North America, Russia, and Scandinavia, with a world population estimated at about five million animals. In Europe, caribou are called reindeer, but in Alaska and Canada, only the domestic forms are called reindeer. Although they're found almost exclusively in Alaska and Canada now, caribou once ranged widely in northern North America and in northern Europe. Overhunting and habitat destruction led to their eradication from Germany during the Roman era, Great Britain during the Middle Ages, and Poland in the 16th century. Caribou were gone from most of the lower 48 states by the beginning of the 20th century. All caribou and reindeer throughout the world are considered to be the same species, but there are seven subspecies. Of the five different subspecies recognized by the Boone and Crockett Club for records keeping purposes, two of the most popular with sportsmen are the barren ground, Rangifer tarandus, and central Canada barren ground, Rangifer tarandus groenlandicus. The largest antlered caribou are the barren ground caribou from Alaska and northern Yukon Territory. The largest barren ground herd is the Western Arctic herd, containing almost half the total caribou in Alaska, which statewide now number over one million animals. Other big herds are the porcupine and the Molchatna herds, and there are 28 smaller herds ranging from the north slope of the Brooks Range to the Canadian border northeast of Toke. Barren ground caribou often have long, rounded main beams with very long top points. They also have the highest all-time records book minimum entry score of 400 points. The world's record was taken by Daniel Dobbs near Iliamna Lake, Alaska in 1999 and scores an incredible 477 points. Central Canada barren ground caribou occur on Baffin Island and the mainland of Northwest Territories and Nunavut, as well as the northwest corner of Manitoba. They have a minimum entry score of 360 points. The current world record was taken in 1994 by Donald J. Hotter III near Humpy Lake, Northwest Territories, and scores an impressive 433 and 48 points. Caribou are built to travel and can cover uneven country at speeds up to 50 miles per hour when necessary. For the most part, though, they move seemingly non-stop at a fast walk. On winter snow in the soggy summer tundra, their large concave hooves hold them up like snowshoes. In water, their hooves become enormous paddles, allowing them to easily ford across fast-flowing rivers and large lakes. They are also a handsome animal, especially in late fall, when their coats are a clove brown with a white neck, rump and feet, and often have a white flank stripe. Caribou are the only member of the deer family in which both sexes grow antlers. Antlers of adult bulls are high, wide and heavy. Those of adult cows are much shorter and are usually more slender and irregular. Even with their impressive racks, caribou are not as big as one would think. Although larger bulls have been recorded, adult bulls average only 350 to 400 pounds. Mature females average 175 to 225 pounds. The shedding of antler velvet by large bulls in late August and early September marks the approach of the rut and the start of fall migration. Like a white-tailed deer, their necks swell enormously in September due to the natural production of testosterone. Dominance fighting begins in early September and becomes more frequent as the rut approaches. Most fights between bulls are brief bouts, but violent fights occur and some bulls are seriously injured or killed. Biologists believe that injured or exhausted bulls often fall prey to wolves and bears after the rut. 
Unlike many other members of the deer family, bull caribou do not collect a harem of cows. Instead, they control a space around themselves and prevent other bulls from breeding females within their space. The largest bulls shed their antlers in late October, but small bulls and non-pregnant cows do not shed their antlers until as late as April. Calving occurs from mid-May to early June. If females are in very good condition, they can breed when they are 16 months old. But in most herds, they do not reproduce until they are 28 months old. Newborn calves sport a coat of reddish brown, weigh an average of 13 pounds, and grow very quickly. They may double their weight in 10 to 15 days. Most adult cows conceive every year and give birth to one calf which is highly susceptible to predation from wolves, grizzly bears, and even golden eagles. After calving, caribou collect in large post-calving aggregations to thwart off these predators and escape the hordes of mosquitoes and warbleflies. These large groups of caribou stay together in the high mountains and along sea coasts where wind and cool temperatures protect them from summer heat and insects. After insect numbers decline in August, caribou scatter out and feed heavily in preparation for the breeding season and pending winter. Like most herd animals, the caribou must keep moving to find adequate food. Large herds often migrate long distances between summer and winter ranges, yet smaller herds may not migrate at all. In summer, caribou eat the leaves of willows, sedges, flowering tundra plants, and mushrooms. In September, they switch to lichens, dried sedges, and small shrubs. Once they decide it is time to go, caribou can travel up to 50 miles a day. This migration is often triggered by the onset of colder weather and snowstorms. Caribou apparently have a built-in compass, like migratory birds and can travel through areas that are unfamiliar to them to reach their calving grounds. Caribou hunting can be some of the most enjoyable and rewarding of all North American big game hunting adventures. In late summer and early fall, the tundra is a kaleidoscope of vibrant changing colors. And when this landscape is filled with vast herds of tall rack nomads, it can be a sight like no other found in nature. Because the caribou are constantly moving, even before the annual migrations begin in late fall, the hunting can be a here today, gone tomorrow proposition. Often camps are set along known migration routes from which sportsmen strike forth on horseback or on foot, searching for traveling herds. The best method is to access a high vantage point and glass. Once the animals are located, the most successful plan is to hastily chart a course for intercept. Trying to catch up with a band of moving caribou from behind is an impossible task. Judging a set of caribou antlers for trophy quality can be very difficult for the first time hunter, used to pursuing smaller antlered game. Even a medium sized bull can look huge. A mature bull will have good mass throughout his rack, long points on top long and wide brow palms, often called shovels, that sweep out to the end of his nose, and long bez or second points. The best caribou racks also have back points that come off the rear of the main beam. It is quite rare to find a bull caribou with true shovel points on both sides. Even though his country is vast, with weather that can bring rain, sleet, sun, snow, and howling winds, all on the same day, and the effort is great just to get near him, the rewards are also great. Caribou, along with other big game species in Alaska, suffered greatly from over-harvesting during the mid to late 1800s. As a result of gold rushes, the commercial meat and fur trade, and the lack of game laws, many species saw a dramatic decline in population. At the urging of the Boone and Crockett Club and its members, Congress enacted groundbreaking legislation that put the concept of wise use conservation on the map. The passage of the 1902 Alaska Game Law 
was the first legislation of its kind and set the tone for similar laws to be passed in the lower 48 states. It prohibited the slaughter of wildlife for commercial purposes, established structured hunting seasons, and required permits for the legal export of meat, hides, and antlers. Alaska's caribou herds were direct beneficiaries of this new consciousness. Caribou are creatures of some of the world's last true wild open spaces. Though their population is in the millions, each bull is unique in its own right. All are magnificent creatures, worthy of our continued respect, management, and protection. <laughs>